everyone welcome to my vlog i haven't done one of these in about a year in fact i started pretty much a year ago just after sow and i had this lovely grand plans of starting a vlog where i sort of do loads of stuff to do with the wheel of the year and it kind of fizzled out i got too worried about how many people are watching and um how boring it was and so on and so on but recently a friend of mine lovely jess hi jess uh, has started doing some weekly vlogs and it sort of inspired me to get back in here so this is sort of um a mixture between vlogging and my newsletter and i think rather than kind of being putting a number on it and saying i need to do this every week or i need to do it once a month or i need to do um of this many blogs and then this many newsletters i'm just going to sort of week by week decide what fits best for me um you know in terms of my energy levels what's actually interesting sometimes i find writing is a lot easier i can get my thoughts out better and then other times i feel like actually just talking them out um is better so that's what this is all about this video you're going to see a very brief moment at the beginning of our Samhain celebration. So I had uh, some pals round to what uh, to enjoy pump fest with me. So it's basically celebrating the humble humble, celebrating the pumpkin, and cooking all sorts of lovely things. I started with a pumpkin fondue. So I basically made a fondue that went inside a roasted pumpkin. It was oh, delicious. Then we had a, um, a butternut squash chili with a stuffed pumpkin filled with bulgur wheat which was also delicious and there was also for pudding we had pumpkin pie and i made some pumpkin spice biscuits there's also a random little clip um, of some bread and some salt that i'd put outside and that was something i read about with the folklore about the um the spirits who roam around on the night of, of all hallows eve so I put out the uh, bread and salt for the spirits to um, to feast on for their energy. So that's, start, that's how it starts. And then there's a very brief clip of me cleaning my monthly altar. So my October and then restocking it. And then I talk you through my book stack, which is what the main, this is the main thing. So I go on quite a lot. Uh, but it is fun. It's just sort of explaining my thoughts on November, but also my the reasons behind the book choices um, for my special library this month. And that's it. So enjoy. This is um, lovely Wolfie. He's a bit worried at the moment because there's been lots of fireworks in the last few evenings and he's just feeling a little bit, bit clingy, aren't you, boy? Mwah. But that's OK. So, yes, enjoy. <laughs> Family. Yeah. It, um, there are other condiments here because I don't know how to judge spiciness. So there's, uh, there's a bit of outfit that he's wearing, which is kind of like nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you tell me if that's. <laughs> about my November altar. I um, 
was doing it with the dishwasher on in the background, um, which was a very silly idea. So I am going to go through all of the reasonings behind my books again. Um, it's probably not as funny and wonderful as the first time I did it, but that is life. I'd rather send, I'd rather put a video on that sounds nice and you can hear me than me trying to talk and hearing the dishwasher going <laughs> the whole time. So yeah, when I um, do my seasonal alters, I actually try to do them every month rather than changing them at the Sabbaths. Um, personally, I think every month has its own character. You know, we all have, um, you know, the stone of the month and the flower of the month and all those sorts of things. So I like to be able to celebrate each month in its own seasonal character. I'm slightly biased about November because it's my birthday month. So I have my birthday, husband's birthday, our anniversary as well. Then there's also uh, bonfire night and uh, over here and then Thanksgiving over in America. So I think for in the UK particularly, we have a habit of making November a bit of a nothing month. So from a work perspective, when I was a teacher, it was sort of like, the slog before the you know all the christmas shows and everything so november was very stressful kind of this is probably the last month we're actually going to get proper work done because december comes and you're just completely you're constantly like distracted by christmas shows and um activities that come up um from us when i was working in sales <laughs> i salute you sales people um november becomes this month that's really stressful because you're trying to get all the contracts in this month because you know that December is not going to be that fruitful because everyone's going to be like, eh, we'll talk to you in the new year. So November can kind of feel like a bit of a slog um, from many perspectives. And it can also, um, you know, from a from a um, nature perspective, you know, this is when everything is pretty much just dying off. And I hope these flies die off soon. They're everywhere. <laughs> It's not like you're going outside and you're seeing these, uh, this abundance of colour and um, new flowers and things like that. So I do appreciate that November can be quite dreary. Um, it's very grey, it's often very wet in the UK. But one thing I do think that November has that other months don't have is the night sky. Um, this is the first month where we're really getting night, dark nights and you're coming home in the dark and that can be miserable but it can also be really cozy and it makes you feel like yeah i'm gonna go and get snuggly and stuff um, i think as well bonfire night although it is technically to commemorate a man who tried to blow up parliament and um, catholics who were being prosecuted by the protestants and all of that what actually i think nowadays we celebrate bonfire night is the it's just a, a nice autumn winter celebration it's all about the sky because of the fireworks, but it's also about, you know, light over dark and so on. Um, and obviously um, in other cultures, you have Diwali in November usually, it's, it was October this year, but quite often Diwali happens at this time of year. And um, Hanukkah can sometimes happen towards the very end of November. And there's a lot of these festivals that are all about light overcoming dark. So this is why I love November personally. So with that in mind, my book choices this month have been focused on um, the night sky, life and death, um, some spirituality. Um, what I find is in the Sabbath months, I get very Wheel of the year -y and I want to learn all about the different, sorry, Wheel of the Year type things. But when it's a month where there isn't a celebration, I like to look at other parts of spiritual thinking and like the mystics and things like that. So, um, one thing before I show you all these books, I just want to make it very clear that these books are not um, a, list, a pile of books that I will read in a month. No, no, I will barely read one, if I'm honest. But for me, this is just like, it's kind of like my little monthly library where I can dip in and out of these books when I feel called to but also when I have friends to visit or if I'm going to see a friend I can look at the books I've got and see is there something that they might want to read they do have to give it back to me it's not a gift it's a library so yeah this is my library stamp 
Um, but let me talk you through them. Okay, third time lucky. Um, this is now my third time because I tried to just film like this and all you can hear is just me clanking along with the camera. So, you know, these vlogs are going to get better, I promise. So, uh, let's start over here. So we've got fiction first. The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Um, I think this is quite hit or miss. I really liked it for its... Um, I just love her style of writing. I feel like every sentence is like a truffle. It's, you know, really rich and decadent. But plot-wise, it took a while and it was a bit like... There were moments where I was like, I have no idea what's going on. I just enjoyed the prose. So if you are a big fan of words, I think this is a fantastic book for you. Um, Richard Osman, The Man Who Died Twice. I've not actually read this yet, um, hence why it's here, but it's also... I picked it for the whole um, dying twice means you're clearly alive, right? And then dead again. Um, but yeah, that will probably get read this month in a weekend because they're quite quick reads. Um, Midnight at Midnight at Malabar House, um, which I started a couple of months ago um, and I'm going to try and come back to it. But it's a uh, it's Basim Khan and it's a murder mystery set in partition times in India. And it's, um, yeah, I really like it. It's sort of like um, a first female uh, police officer in India. Um, and yeah, it's very interesting so far. I like it. Uh, then we've got Butterflies in November, which I've not read, but I just thought because it's called November, it's a good time to put it on. The Night Circus, which um, is another Erin Morgan Stern. This book basically gets palmed off on any friend that says to me, oh, I'm looking for a new book to read. What should I read? And then I will give them this because I just love it so much. It's very similar to Star Wars Sea. It's very like every line is just, oh, it's like wearing a, it's like wearing a velvet cape. You know, it just feels so luxurious to read. Um, but again, not totally plot heavy uh, is what I would say. Or plot heavy, but um this one the ninth stone i don't know anything about i picked it up in a charity shop about a year ago um i just thought for some reason it makes me feel quite november -y, that one so i might get around to that one the essex serpent which i read a while ago this is great it's very um sort of victorian edwardian gothic um sort of about death um well it is about death and life i guess in a way um yeah i really recommend that one if you're into the sort of gothic novels uh women who run with the wolves oh so now we're on to non-fiction so women who run with the wolves um is one that i keep trying to read it's very i find it difficult to read to understand like i have to i can't read much more than a couple of pages at a time hence the um yeah why it's taking a while but i just thought like wolves quite wintry you know that sort of thing um everything is spiritual by rob bell and um, i just love this guy's brain and this book is basically like a brain dump there's not it's not really prose it's not really poetry it's not there's no chapters or anything it's just kind of like stream of consciousness but really interesting and um, almost like an autobiography in a way then we have Moonology by uh, Yasmin Boland, which is just like all about working with the moon um, and the moon cycles and things. Poems now, Staying Alive. Um, this, I just thought this was a good poetry book for dark times generally. Um, Goddess Rituals. This is just one I picked up from the works. It's not the best, but I thought as I'm yeah not going to be doing much Wheel of the Eerie stuff, there might be some fun things to do in there. Uh, a poem for every night of the year self-explanatory seeking aliveness by brian d mclaren and this is actually a book that is a year um a year-long companion um to kind of read along with the bible it's um he's a progressive christian author and i really like him really rate him um but i just thought because it's called seeking aliveness we'll put that in there uh, notes on a nervous planet space night you know Sometimes um, it is genuinely books I just want to read and sometimes it's just because it fits with the theme. Then I've got uh, Wild Embers by Nikita Gill, which I just thought embers, bonfire and so on. Now we're going to move on to books that I have. Hang on a sec. Now I'm going to move on to books that I have on here most of the year. Um, so let's start first with The Almanac by Leah Leendetz, which is 
um, a book I've been collecting pretty much since 2017 when they started. So essentially, it kind of every year is slightly different. But um, we've, this year we've got um, a recipe, a folklore, um, a, so a folk song, what's going on in nature at this time of the year. And it's really cool because when it started, it was very England centric or Britain centric. But as the years have gone on, she's sort of collecting more and more stories and um, ideas from other cultures and things. Um, so it's really, really um, rich text. And even when, you know, this is very year specific, but you can still read all the old ones and still learn so much. So it's, it's a really amazing little collection. This one is like an evergreen almanac. This is new this year. It's called the Spiritual Almanac. And it's sort of similar in that like every month there's um, things to go through like affirmations, meditation, journaling prompts, um, creativity, things like that. But then each month is a theme. And so those those actions all link to the theme of the month. Um, so this has been good. I haven't actually done it every month. But it's um, now that I've got it here, I'm hoping that I'm going to try and make like a monthly ritual where I do go through this book each month. Uh, this one's just a bit of fun, instant magic oracle. It's just kind of like you open the book, a random page, and it will say things. So like, check in with what you are consuming in your body and your mind. Oh, it's a good one. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like picking up an affirmation card. Um, Wild Witchcraft, this is fairly new in my collection. This is all about um, growing and foraging herbs. So it's something that I've been learning about. So I just thought if I have it here, then I will dip into it more often. And then this isn't actually here all year, but I try to have some kind of puzzle book. And this is my gardener's puzzle book from the RO Trust. It's very difficult, but it's all kind of like silly puzzles about plants. And then finally, The Way of the Fearless Writer by Beth Kempton, which is um, new for me. It only came out last month. It's already battered and worn because it comes out with me on many a journey. But that's my book collection for the month. So, yes, um, I'd love to hear what yours are. Bloody flies! That could be a blooper. <laughs> anyway.